Good evening. This is Mr. Nash, and this is a review of Unit 1 of AP Physics, which was kinematics. So, disclaimer, uh, this, he, these questions were not created by me. They were created by a different teacher or, a, or the college board itself. But before we start, the most important thing to know is um, the four letter acronym that I came up with for solving AP physics problems, and that is K F E S. And that's what do you know? What do they tell you? What do you need to find? What equations should you use? And then just solve it. So what background information do you need to know? before we move on to what kind of questions you have to answer. And by the way, another disclaimer is that these questions are um, to help you, you review the content and they will be more challenging on the exam than this. And I will have a video about how to answer the, their actual kind of questions. These are numerical answer questions which are not commonly on the exam. This is just to help you remember how to use these concepts. but. You need to know your kinematic equations. Well, you don't really need to memorize them because they're on your formula, formula sheet, but these are what they are. And we need to know what the, these things mean. Velocity, acceleration, time, distance. And if you have a zero, that means initial. Hopefully that's a review. And also for the ones that have squares, don't forget that. And remember that X is separate from Y. That's what we have to remember because you might have an x velocity that's different than the y velocity, definitely. And when you're looking at graphs, you can use the slope or area under the curve to find the other one. So we have uh, distance versus time, velocity versus time, acceleration versus time. And uh, acceleration in the x can be anything, but in the y, it's g, which is negative 10 meters per second. Remember, for kinematics, you got to use negative. So, also, if you want to find an x component of velocity, you use cosine of whatever angle it's at. And for y, you use sine. And here's a picture showing you how things can change. So, you can get the highest distance by a 45 degree angle, but by a the, the higher the angle is the higher it will go, but not always the higher or the far further it will go. 45 is the furthest and 90 is the highest that it can go. So in here, at certain parts, what are things like? So the, I mean, like the velocities and acceleration. So really you can see that it just, it, it, um, the main thing to know is at the top right here, you have um, no velocity in the y, but you do have velocity in the x. That's what it's always like at the top of the projectile, even if you are it's launched horizontally instead of launched up. Um, and so, yeah, like I said, for time t. Uh, and the y is zero, and in the x is just whatever it happens to be. So now let's look at some problems. Okay, so this says you travel to a different planet and drop your keys while walking. So um, a graph of the acceleration is shown. What was the displacement of your keys for the first 0 0.5 seconds? So we need to, what do we know? Well, we know what it shows in the graph, but um, this is the time and it's asking for displacement. So how do we figure that out? So, We need to know if we're looking for, um, wait. Uh, 
So it's saying each block is one second. So this is times 0.5. Uh, and so what you have to do, let, let's think about it. So we have an acceleration versus time graph. We want to get to displacement. There's also velocity. But if you look at the area under the curve, then you'll find the uh, velocity. And then the area under the curve of the velocity graph would be the uh, displacement. That's what we need to do. So let's first run this area under the curve. So that would be um, down here. This should be negative 2. And remember, area under the curve is always to the x-axis. So we do area. Is, um, that would be 0 0.5 times negative 2. So that means that it's negative 1. That means that's the slope for the velocity. So let's just try to draw that uh, velocity graph negative slope and it starts from zero and it goes down but it is increasing but it has a slope of negative one now if this is our 0 0.5 time then and this would be then uh negative two what is it like here so we would have to do wait a second. Slope with negative one. Oh no. Sorry, this would be instead velocity negative zero point five. Because that's that's just what where the acceleration is, not the uh, velocity at that time. So we area of a triangle is 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. And that is divided by 2. And so we get that it is 0 0.125 meters. So that's not really a question where you use an equation, really, but you just use the graph. So we're not going to do every single question on here, but let's look at this one next. Anna and Bill are determining the speed at which Bill uh, released a ball thrown vertically upward. Anna measures the time. They also use a meter stick to measure the height. So which of the following equations should the students use to determine the velocity at which it was released? So we're trying to find what VO is, or initial velocity. And so they know, so it's saying Anna measures the time. So they know time. Uh, they, they know the height. So that means they know the Y initial. And that's what they know. But acceleration in the y direction or due to gravity is always going to be, you can use 9.81, but we're going to, and it has to be negative for kinematics, like I said. So negative 10 meters per second is what it is. So they know that too. So Basically, we have to use an equation that um, that only has one unknown variable, which is VO. So do we know the final uh, Y? Yes, because it's going to be zero if it hits the ground. So we know initial velocity, or sorry, initial Y. We don't know that, but that's what we're trying to find. We do know time. We do no acceleration. We do no time. So we could use this, A, and that's the same thing for B. We could use that. But we cannot use C or D because we don't know the final velocity. So we can those can't not be used. But now let's see, should we use A or B? So what's the difference between those answers? That's what I like to do. 
um, use that equation from the moment in which the time or the ball was released um, to the moment in time it reaches the highest point. So do we need released to highest point? Or do we need released to all the way down? We need to use B, and the reason why is because Anna measured the time for the full thing, not just the up thing. So there you go. That's a question like that. That is actually one that would be like on your exam. Okay. And now let's just look at uh, this. Looking at number three, when the ball is in the air, as Bill throws it upwards, once again, didn't create this question, don't know why someone didn't make this capital. Um, the direction of magnitude of the acceleration is, so when it's thrown upwards. So is acceleration upwards? Well, what is the acceleration anyways? X, there's, it's moving, it's directly up, so there's no acceleration in the X. That means there's only acceleration in the Y, which is G. G always brings things down, that's gravity. So it's not gonna be up. Is it, is, does acceleration change? No, it's always 10, negative 10 meters per second. If you look at acceleration graph, it's always a straight line, whether it's zero or um, at a random position, it's never like that or like that, especially for gravity. So, oh, well now let's see, what's the direction of the velocity? as it's being thrown upwards. Well, uh, vol direction of the velocity follows the direction of motion. If it's going up, then the velocity will be up. So CDE, and then is it decreasing or is it constant? Decreasing, because when it gets to the top, it's zero. And then it goes, oh, there you go, because increases again. That's what it's like, so decreasing. Oh, uh, okay. Well, let's look at this one too, since it's about the same thing. Once again, the person doesn't know how to make it uppercase. Uh, suppose Bill throws the ball with an uh, initial velocity of six meters per second, and it goes upwards. How could you find the height at which it goes? Well, and this is actually, I take that back. Some of these are like what would be on your exam because it's not saying find an actual number, it's saying write an expression. So what do we need to do? Um, well, we need, we, what do we know? We know this. Um, and then we need to find height. So height is y in the kinematics equation. So let's try to figure out what kinematics equation to use, okay? Hmm, let's see, what has initial velocity? All of them do, but we can't use the third one because we don't know final velocity. And um, we, we can't use, yeah, we can't use the first one either because it has final velocity. So we have to use this second one. And even though it has X, we do it in terms of Y. Okay, so let's start out by writing that equation. Oh, great. Hmm. Went away from it. Okay. Okay, so let's write the equation. The equation is, in terms of y at least, y equals y initial plus vot plus one half, and then uh, one half, and then we can write G, because that's it's really acceleration due to gravity, squared. And we always know G is negative in kinematics. Um, and we're trying to find this, wait, yeah, the maximum height that it reaches. So what we need to do is, um, plug in what values we have. 
because it's it's not asking for it's asking for an expression um, and we can fill in what we know but the rest we just have to leave as variables so we know that the initial is zero because from our reference frame it's starting at zero even though in the other in the um number three it's not from zero it's we put zero this time because um from the point of view of this problem that is the initial so we don't write anything for that initial velocity was six we don't know the time and then one half that's just the same and then g is negative 10 and then t squared we we don't know time so we just leave that the same so so we change this to this plus and then that will change to negative 5t squared and that's really all you can do okay um let's see which other ones we want to do let's just do this number seven um to practice what the using the equations is like okay so this one says a car is at rest and accelerates to 20 meters per second squared. What is the speed after it reaches 40 meters, which would be the X final? So, K, what do we know? We know the speed is, or I mean, we, we know the acceleration, we know the distance, but we don't know the speed. So that's what we're trying to find. So we can try to figure out what equation to use, okay? All right. We don't know time, so we have to use the third one. Simple enough. Because the third one doesn't have um, the variable t in it. So let's just write to the side what we know. We know the acceleration is 20 meters per second squared. And the initial x, we can just assume to be zero. Don't want to write that down right now, but we can just assume that if it's starting at rest. The final velocity is what we're trying to find. We can, if it's at rest, the initial velocity is zero. And we know that the final x position is 40 meters yeah, and then we write down our equation that we're going to use. We're going to use this one. And always remember your squareds. That's a common mistake. If you make mistakes on the AP exam, you want to make it not, not make ones that are pointless. Okay, so the final velocity, that's what we're trying to find. Ugh. Let me just zoom this in. That's what we're trying to find. We, the initial velocity is zero. The acceleration is 20. And the change in distance or change in x is 40. Because initial is zero, final is 40. So now when you do that, you get v squared equals 1,600. So uh, the velocity at this time was 40 meters per second, all right? That's how you use your equations. All right, now let me try to figure out what other one we should do. Um, let me click on a different. Um, all right, let's, let's move on. Here, I'm gonna skip a few that don't need to do. All right, we're gonna do this one, number three. So, right here, let's see. How does the time to reach the ground change in height? Um, rate with change in range 
and vertical and horizontal acceleration compared between these. So let how does the time to reach the ground? Let's just say T. Then we'll say change in height. So delta Y, or we could just say H, but um, how does the range? So how far it goes, X. And or vertical and horizontal acceleration. Vertical acceleration, that's just G. Horizontal acceleration, that's AX. And then, yeah, that's all it asked. And I'll just, whatever I write, if I write A or B, that means that's the one where it's greater. Or I'll just write same if it's the same. So what's the time? Um, how do we know the time that it will take? Well, we got to look at our kinematic equations. And scroll back up here. How do we know? Well, the initial velocities are the same. And, oh wait, the initial velocities are not the same because it was V and 2V. Um, it will, wait. Okay, so the ex, we cannot use the first equation. Hang on a second. Okay, so we can't use the, the first equation. Wait, am I unmuted? Yes, because the accelerations are different um, and the velocities are different. But um, the time is going to be the same. And that's not necessarily something you could see by just looking at an equation. But that's something like important to know. I probably should have put that on background information. But regardless of a velocity, the two thing the two things are gonna fall with the same time if they have the same height. See, same height. So we can already say same for that. I'll just write s and then same for that because of that. Since their um, change in y or height is the same, so will their time be. Now, what about their distance? The distance is going to have to be greater for B because it has a greater velocity. So that's what that does. But what about G? Well, same, obviously, still um, negative 10 meters per second. But what about the horizontal acceleration? It's also the same. Because, well, it doesn't tell you that, but. Um, you should have same mass. So, so there you go. The only thing that is different because the velocity is different is the range. Okay. So remember that important. Okay. Now we're going to look at um, going to look at uh, one last question. The la this is, a, okay, last question. So, hang on, it's got to load. Oh, wait, never mind. This is what it is. Okay. So, a block of mass M1 travels horizontally with a constant speed on a plateau of height H until it comes to a cliff. A toboggan of mass M2 is positioned on the level, or you see it's positioned on the ground level below the cliff as shown above. The center of the toboggan is distance D from the cliff. You know, sometimes you have to really just look at the picture because that's kind of just stupid things because like you see, that's what it shows in the picture. Really what matters is determine D in terms of those things. 
So basically, let's start out with what we know. Well, we don't really know anything except for what's in the picture, which is sometimes what it's like, because they didn't tell you any numbers. Because sometimes it's just dumb variable ones, actually, most of the time. Unfortunately, if you don't like that, sorry. That's what AP is like. So what do we do? What are we trying to find? We're trying to find D. And you might be like, D, I don't know what that is. X. They just trying to make it a different letter to make it seem dumb. But this is really a change in X that we would see in a kinematics equation. So, and it says in terms of those things, hint, if it says in terms of something, that always will have it in it. And it sometimes will say, and any other constants, but it doesn't say that on this one. But so it should have those things in your dumb equation that you make. And it could have numbers too. So let's start out with an equation. What equation, kinematics equation, and I'm not going to scroll back up because that's all the way at the top. But the one that has, let's see, it, it's got to have distance, it's got to have height. Um, and, oh, but there's something about this one that I just realized. We have X and Y. What does that mean? Two different things. We got to use two different equations and then combine them together. Because what thing is the same for both? Time is the same for both. Acceleration can be distant, different. Position, velocity, different, different, different. But time is the same. So you can just use the time from one thing and put it into the other. I'll, sh I'll show you what that means. So, Um, the what equation has those things, and it could have g in it too. That would be um, the ones that are the the long one. You know, that's what I call it, the long one. So let's start out by the one that has x in it. So and. We'll just put X for these things. Here, let me just zoom this in so I can write this quicker. Plus one half A T squared. All right. Now we got it because we wrote it like that. Let's switch it out for their dumb things they have. All right. Their X, it, they call it D. So you just have to say D. And initial, that's just zero. So what else is zero? Time is zero, um, the initial time. Well, it, yeah, obviously the initial time is zero, but also acceleration in the X direction is zero as well. So that whole term becomes zero. And then what is their VOX? They just call it VO, so let's just change out the VO. And what is their T? Um, they don't really have a T, so we can just make it still T. So that's all we know. Um, now let's go over to our Y, let's, uh, have a, a Y equation. Y final, then equals Y initial plus VOY T plus one half GT squared. What things are zero? Initial y as zero. It always is when it's something that's like that, launched horizontally or the top of a projectile. What is, what else? Is initial y zero? It's, on, it's up on top of something, how could it be zero? But the final is, so that's zero. All right, now let's just re, uh, Rewrite this in terms of what dumb things they have. What is their VO, their initial Y? They call it H. Plus, what is their G? Still call it G. What is their T? They still call it T. What is their squared? They still call it squared. I mean, whatever. But now you're like, uh, what do I do? Two different equations. And in the first place, how did we know to do two different equa uh, equations? Well, I said it was because we have X and Y. That's what you have to do. But there's a way you can combine them. What's the same in both things? Are, is it D in both? No. Is it VO in both? No. 
Is a G in both? No. Is a T in both? Yes. So rearrange them both in terms of T. All right. Well, not both. I mean, what are we trying to find anyways? Or not H, we're trying to find D. We know VO, that can be in the equation, but T cannot. So we have to make T something different. What can we make it? Well, let's rearrange this one in terms of T. So what do we have to do? Subtract H. Divide by one half, which means multiplying by two. And divide by G, just step ahead. And then square rooting, it is this. And by the way, why is it negative? Because you can make G, because G is negative in kinematics, that's why. So this is what T equals. So. Are we allowed to have H and G? Yes, it said that in terms of H, G, and V, O. So let's now change this to this. All the things we put in there are allowed. So that's our answer. Because this is T. We plug that in for T because that's the point of having two equations. So there you go. That's how you do it. So to review, remember all the things I told you at the beginning, the, the equations. And you also need to remember that different, here, let me just type on here. Is it not letting me type? Okay, it's just delayed. Different uh, initial velocities, Velocities means different displacements, ranges, not different times or accelerations. Another thing is that um, launched horizontally. the acceleration in the uh, X equals that, and the acceleration in the Y equals G, which is negative 10 meters per second squared. So let me change these some things. And the two things that I already did say at the beginning, but are very important for kinematics. So I'll do this. X is different from Y. You will have a different X velocity, X displacement, X acceleration than the Y. So you have to write two equations and you can combine or connect through uh, T, because they're, that's the only thing that's the same for them. Uh, time in the X, time in the Y, same. Other things, not the same. And so that's what you'll have to do sometimes. So that's it. Oh, also negative G. You have to have it negative in Kinemax. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and good luck on your exam.